In this lesson, we're going to be looking at different types of fractions, okay? Now, the first type of fraction that I would like you to know is the proper fraction. And the proper fraction can also be described as a vulgar fraction. Now, what do we mean by that? In a proper or a vulgar fraction, the numerator is smaller, and I want you to note this word, smaller, than the denominator, okay? So, for example, an by now you should know that we like I like to use diagrams because it tends to bring across the message a lot clearer okay so now I could ask you to represent on this fraction in a proper fraction how many parts are in the whole one two three four five six seven eight so since we have eight parts in the whole we have to put an eight in the denominator now I could ask you to represent three out of 8. So if I ask you to th represent 3 out of 8, we would have to shade 3 parts. Okay, so here I'm shading my first part of the whole. So that's the first part. Then I'm going to shade another part of the whole. So that's the second part. Okay, and I'm going to shade another part of the whole. And that would be the third part. So here I would have shaded one, two, three. So I'm speaking about three parts. So three goes into my numerator. And the total parts in the whole, there are eight parts, and that eight goes in my denominator. Now, this is a proper fraction. If you notice, the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Now, a second example quickly. In a, in a proper fraction or a vulgar fraction, here, how many parts we have in the whole? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are 9 parts in the whole. So if you're asked to represent 5 parts out of these 9 parts, then we would have to shade a total of 5. Okay? So let, let's shade. This is 1 part I'm shading. 1. So that's 1 part. This is another part. So that's 2. These are 2 parts. And I'm going to shade another part, so this would be three parts. And I'm shading another part, which is four, and another part, which is five. So now I've shaded a total of five parts. Okay, let me just just go shade these in another direction just to to make it a bit clearer for you. Okay. So now we have shaded a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have shaded 5 parts out of a total of how many parts we said? There were a total of 9 parts. So if you notice, the total number of parts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, goes in our denominator because our denominator states how many parts there are in the whole, while our numerator sp tells us how many parts we're speaking about, okay? And in this case, we're speaking about 5 parts. And it's, it's really that easy when asked to represent proper fractions on diagrams. Okay, guys? Now, let's move on quickly to our second uh, type of fraction. So, let, let me just scroll up a bit. And this type of fraction that we're dealing with is the improper fraction. Now, in an improper fraction, if you note now, the numerator is larger or bigger than the denominator so i wanted to take note of this our numerator in a in an improper fraction is bigger than the denominator now in this exercise we're going to show uh, improper fractions okay so let's just use a quick exercise exercise number one I'm going to ask you to show you sorry you may be asked to show let's say three out of two on the diagram below okay so we're asked to show this fraction three out of two now if you notice in our numerator our numerator is larger than our denominator we have a three up there and a two in the denominator now by intuition the numerator will tell us the amount of parts we're speaking about however if you look into if you look at this whole there are only a total of two parts so by intuition it would suggest that we would need another diagram to show our three out of two so let's just get another diagram and let me just get that quickly 
All right, so here we have our other diagram. So let me just put it right beside it. Okay, guys, and uh -huh, that's it. So here we are going. We are asked to show a three out of two. So let's just quickly look at that. And here I'm going to shade how many parts? I need a total of three parts. So I'm going to shade this part. Okay, so that's one part that I've shaded. Now I have to shade another part, okay, because that's one. So this would be two parts I've shaded. So that's two parts. But I need three parts. So it simply means that I'm going to have to go over here now and I'm going to have to shade another part to show my improper fraction. So that's another part that's been shaded. Now if you notice, I have shaded one, two, three parts. Okay, so I've shaded a total of three parts. And if you notice, uh, inside each hole, there are two parts inside each hole. Okay, so I've shaded two parts here, one part there, three. But the total number of parts in each hole is two, which represents the two in my denominator there. Okay, now in exercise number two let, let's let me just make a quick note there so that was exercise one so this is exercise number two now in exercise number two they are asking us to show show nine over four okay nine out of four now remember our denominator tells us how many parts that we have in the in the whole while our numerator tells us how many parts we are speaking about now if you notice I have one two three four parts so inside in one hole rather there are four parts but we're asked to shade nine so again this would suggest that we're going to need more than one diagram so let's just get that out of the way quickly so I need, I would have to get another diagram to show my, uh -huh. so let me just copy that and paste. And here now I would have another diagram. But if you notice inside these two diagrams, I would have a total of eight parts, but they're asking us to shade nine. So we would need again another diagram. So I would have to get a, another diagram. So you're going to count with me now. We have gotten our three diagrams and in each diagram, the total number of parts are four. So we have four parts in each diagram, hence the four in our denominator. Now we're asked to shade nine parts, okay? So let's shade, this, this would be one part that I'm shading. This is a second part, so that's two. This would be three, three parts. Then this would be four parts that I'm shading. So inside this diagram, I've shaded only four parts, but I need nine, so I have to continue to shade. So this would be five parts that I've shaded. Then I would shade another one, so this would be six. Then this one would be seven. A seven and then this would be eight parts that I'm shading okay so inside these two diagrams I've shaded a total of eight parts but I need nine so it simply means then I would have to shade another part over here okay guys yes yeah, so now I've shaded one two three four and let's count so this is one part, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've shaded a total of nine parts. And if you look carefully, the four means that in each hole, okay, it, each hole is divided into four equal parts. So that's, that's what the denominator tells us, how many parts the hole is divided into. Okay, and, and really, it's, it's that easy. Okay, now that's the second type of fraction that I would like you to be comfortable with, which is our improper fraction. Now, now the third basic type of fractions that we do have is called mixed numbers. Okay, sometimes students get a bit confused by saying mixed fractions, but we don't have such thing as mixed fractions. Okay, they are called mixed numbers. And as it states, a mixed number is really, it's a combination of a whole number and a 
proper fraction. Now, it's very important because when explaining mixed numbers, I like you. I, li I would like for our candidates now to make a connection with the improper fraction and mixed numbers. Okay, because if you note here, I have made a critical note that when an improper fraction is simplified, it will result in a mixed number. And let's show you what I'm speaking about. And I'll use an example from our previous exercise. Now. Here we, we 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 had three we shaded three out of two on our diagrams here. Now I could simplify this diagram into a mixed numbers. Okay? So let's let me just let me just take a copy of this and let me show you what we're speaking about very quickly. And this a bit. Let me just borrow this from here. Okay. And again I'm going to borrow this. Okay just to show you a relationship between our improper fractions and our mixed numbers. Now, basically, if you remember carefully what we had shaded, we had shaded a total of 3 out of 2. So we shaded 3 out of 2 up here okay but what I'm saying 3 out of 2 is the same as as a mixed number if you notice inside this diagram this diagram had two parts and we shaded 1 2 okay the total parts out of this whole so here we can say we have shaded one entire hole so that's one hole that we have shaded and down here we have shaded how many parts out of this hole there are a total of two parts inside this hole so I would have shaded one part out of two parts and that would be our mixed number okay it's that simple so when an when an improper fraction is simplified it will result in a mixed number and also if you notice we had shaded nine out of four parts and if you look inside on this diagram carefully you would have known that nine out of four that's what we have shaded here would it and that would be equal to there are how many parts inside each hole? One, two, three, four parts. And if you note, we have shaded this entire hole. So this is one hole. This is a second hole that we have shaded. So we had shaded a total of two parts, two holes rather. And inside the third hole, we would have shaded one out of four parts. So we say then that we had shaded one fourth. Okay, and, and those are our answers and it's that easy so when working with mixed numbers it's basically you you are simplifying an improper fraction and later on we look at some more exercises as it relates to this okay it's it's really that easy all right thank you and bye